Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very special show coming up. And what I mean by special show is that this is a one hour interview with one of my dearest friends, my business and spiritual mentor, Miss Judy Goodman. So Judy may possibly be one of the most gifted teachers and motivational speakers today. Her access to the workings of the physical world and the other side is absolutely amazing. She works and teaches without limits, usually associated with most talented teachers. A go-to person for many people, she is born with the gift of seeing beyond the ordinary view of most people. Judy teaches beyond conventional wisdom. She may be without peer in her experience of the events and the workings of the physical and spiritual realms. This extraordinary combination of gifts is very unique and probably the most profound I have ever seen. Today, Judy's here to talk to us about a topic I think that's on the forefront of everyone's mind, how we can change our reality. So let's welcome to the show, Judy Goodman. Marianne, it's good to be with you again. How are you? (laughs) I am doing fabulous, and I'm so excited we're spending this time together. My goodness. I mean, it's like every time we are able to have these interviews and have this time together, I learn so much from you. Well, you're very kind. There are a limitless number of things that we can talk about, and I know that we're going to be talking about changing our reality today, which I'm pretty sure most of us would like to do that in one way or another. But, you know, there are so many things that interface with our daily reality, our attitude, our disposition, the way we speak our words. The most important thing that I've been teaching, one of the most important things, shall I say, has been that our words create our reality. So in most cases, the very words that we speak create the world that we're living in, create the environment that we're in, create the reality that we are experiencing. And it's really not too far off from manifesting, if you will, and We've known each other for a long time. We've talked about how we manifest and bring things into our reality. So what I want to do today with your audience is to maybe speed the process up a little bit. You know, we've learned a good, effective way of meditating and having our visions of the things that we want to create. But I I want to speed that process up a little bit if we can because things are in such turmoil in so many different ways, there's such a shift and change in our energy. We've just gone through the eclipse, and up until that point, the energy has been very um, turned up, very upsetting, very volatile at times. And with the actual completion of the eclipse, the energy began to settle down and to stabilize. So in many ways, what that has meant to some of us is where the issues in our life were bubbling up to the surface, where our challenges seem to be greater, where the earth has been in its own state of shifting and adjusting, A lot of that has stabilized and is coming now into fruition based on the realities that we're creating. So we're going to talk today about how to change the reality and whatever has surfaced in your life recently that you want to change. And hopefully we're going to give you some ideas about how to use your words, just the power of your words, the way you speak every day. And you can do this when you wake up in the morning. Before your feet hit the floor, you can say, I am having a wonderful day. Those words create the air, the space, the energy for your day to become wonderful. Simple, and perhaps it seems over simple, but it could not be more true in any way that I know. So 
How does that sound to you today? We're going to teach everybody a little bit about changing our reality. Are you ready to change your reality? I know I am. <laughs> oh, I am I am most definitely ready to um, start working on that, and I cannot wait to hear what you have to talk about in regards to that. And one thing that kind of stood out for me was attitude. You know, I think a lot of times when people, when they wake up, maybe, you know, like how you were just saying, um, not in this context, but, you know, things that they could do to shift it. But, you know, if they wake up and they're just having like a tough day and there's stresses, you know, how can we make these shifts in our attitudes that get us to where we want to be? It's about words. It's about phrases. It's about thinking ahead. And, you know, when you lie down at night, when you lay down your body to go to sleep and to try to get rest, you've got the the worries and the stress of the day. You you know what you're dealing with. You know what's been hurting and what's going on. And many times if you haven't had your meditation moment or prayerful moment to clear those things when you wake up in the morning, those same things will be present. So you already know what you're dealing with. So make a choice, and it is about a choice. Make a choice and make a decision to do something different. And let's say that last night I went to bed and things had been rough. I couldn't pay all the bills or the children were uh, on edge about something at school. They didn't have all the school supplies or maybe my partner is unhappy. And then when I wake up, I know that I'm going to be facing a lot of those same things again. So I have an opportunity. I have a choice. And I can begin my day by saying things are really better today. Things are really better today. And that puts an energy into the universe that says whatever is required, whatever is necessary, bring it into my presence, bring it into my countenance in order to make things better. And, again, it seems so simple, and yet, It's so true that if we will begin by changing our approach and our attitude, that will begin the process of turning this around. So it is a choice, always a choice and an opportunity to make something different. So changing our attitude about something is what's going to be the first thing. Marianne, there's a lot of things. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. So um, forgive me if I seem like I'm going in a circle, but there's many things I want to cover. One of the things that I want to remind your audience of, and some of us have heard this before, but in our lifetime, even as we are learning how to rewrite the script of our life, when we are learning how to change our attitude when we are learning how to create a better life for ourselves. There's something that kind of is in the background. This has to do more with our soul and the responsibilities of our soul, uh, our accountability. There are a few things that we must learn before this life is over. And I just want to mention those again because we have not spoken about this in a while, and I just want to kind of bring it into everyone's thinking again. So write these down so that you won't forget. At some point in your lifetime, even as you are changing your words, changing your life, changing your attitude, here are the things that you must also learn how to do and learn how to accomplish. Number one is to be a teacher. You're going to be a teacher. If you, and and I'm not saying that we're all going to rush over to the local school and we're going to go in and be a teacher in that way. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm speaking of is the fact that we teach by example, not by word, to our children, to our neighbors, to our friends, even Mary Ann, as she speaks, as you speak to your audience, which I understand is becoming very international now, and congratulations on being picked up on iHeartRadio. What a wonderful opportunity this is for so many hundreds and thousands of people that will hear these incredible shows that you do. But Marianne is a teacher. She is teaching people by bringing all of these truths, all of this knowledge, She is a teacher in showing you other ways to think or other ways to act or other ways to be responsible. So we all 
fulfill that obligation sooner or later or in one way or another. So at some point in your lifetime, you're going to be in the position of teaching other people. Another thing, and write this one down too, another thing that you are going to accomplish and achieve in this lifetime is you will be a healer. You will help someone feel better. You know, there are many ways to help and heal people with the tremendous floods that we're just experiencing in Texas right now. Ways that we may heal are to make a donation to uh, one of the charitable foundations that will help people, or if we were in Texas, the way we heal may be that we get some kind of boat and we go out and we rescue. Or if our child comes to us and they've been bullied today, then we may be a healer because we sit down and we listen and we hear and Referring back again to what we're talking about today, about changing our reality, if you are helping a child who's been bullied or they've been wounded somehow, if you will teach them how to change their words, change their response, then you're teaching them how to change their reality. We heal by listening, by talking, by being present, by being accountable, by making a donation or by cooking food and taking it to someone who is not able to prepare their meal or possibly by cutting the grass or picking up trash in their yard or something that I did yesterday. I have a friend that is not able to drive right now, so I took my friend over to get their hair cut and to go do their shopping, and that is a form of healing. So don't forget that there are many ways that you can heal, sometimes just being a good listener, letting a person speak and get those burdensome worries out of their spirit is very healing for them. Another thing that you're going to achieve during your lifetime is you're going to be a protector. Write this one down, too, so you don't forget. So far, we have got teacher, healer, and protector. Now, if we think about protecting, there are many ways that we can protect. We can protect our children. Uh, We may uh, work in an environment where there is someone doing things that they should not do, and so we help to bring that to attention where it's changed. A protector could be law enforcement. It could be armed services. It could be the gate guard at a school ground that watches children as they play or as they cross the street. So many ways that you can become a protector one way or another. But remember, our little animals also need protecting. They need our care, our nurturing, our concern. So at some point in your life, you're going to learn how to be a protector and teaching your children how to rephrase their words or even you rephrasing your word and speaking differently, that helps to become protecting also. Another thing that you're going to learn how to do in your lifetime, this is a good one. This one can be fun. And write this one down too, a gift giver, a gift giver. Wow, you know, Marianne, we just recently had a lady uh, from, uh, that won the lottery, the largest lottery that has ever been won, and I suspect that she will be a gift giver in many ways to her family, to herself, and perhaps to her community. And it's wonderful when you have that kind of money to give the gifts for, but that's not the only way. It goes right back to what we were talking about being a healer. When you go and take food to someone, uh, you help heal the loneliness of another person, then you give gifts by giving of your time, being a volunteer, by taking the time to listen to someone. But these are important things that all through life, as you are learning how to change your reality by changing the words, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but these are things that you're going to learn, you should be learning during your lifetime, gift giver. Okay, here's your next one, and then there'll be two more after this, so write this one down. 
you will become a storyteller or a historian, meaning that you may talk about your history, you may talk about the history of a culture, you may talk about the history of your country, we may talk about the persecution of people that have been harmed or been in pain, but we will tell stories, we will remember our history, and we will help others remember it so that we do not continue to repeat some of the same things, but Sometimes the history and the stories that we tell talk about the good things and the great things, and when we do that, then we are teaching. Go, see, we go right back to that first word, teacher. We are teaching others how to be better people, how to treat each other better. One more, uh, arbitrator, or we could call it a negotiator, is that at some point in time, you may be called to help settle uh, an argument or a dispute. Uh, there may be things going on in your community where there are protests, and we, we see a lot more of that today than we have in a long time. And sometimes just encouraging people to talk or helping people find a way to talk where they were not able to before. We can be that person in the middle that would allow each person to speak and get these feelings out of their system, but we can become an arbitrator. Now, here's the last one, and I'm going to go over these again just to be sure you've written them down because these are important for you to remember, even as we're going to talk about the words that we speak that change our reality. The last one is a light bearer, light bearer, someone who carries the light. Now, there's and in this context, Marianne, what I'm, I'm referring to is sort of that light, that essence. To me, you're a light bearer because you're making it possible for truths, many truths at different levels to be heard all over the world. And that's, that's putting energy, the light, information. And that can be love. It can be information. It can be a lot of different things. But a person who holds the light and gives people a place to go to for truth or for information. Um, so let me just repeat these one more time. Be sure you've got them written down where you won't forget them no matter what else you take away from today. At some point in this lifetime, you're going to learn how to be a teacher, a healer, a protector, a gift giver, a storyteller or a historian, an arbitrator, someone who can settle differences, and a light bearer, someone who holds a truth and a light within themselves or helps other people to be able to find a peaceful place to be. So now that you know some of the, the uh, things that are going to be required of your lifetime, let's talk about how your life is going, how you can Use your words to change your life. Is it time to kind of shift that train of thought now, Marianne? <laughs> yeah, do you know, I, I agree with you 100%. There are some things I think most everyone can probably, you know, in one capacity or another agree that there's probably like maybe one area in their life, if not more, that they're looking to make shifts in. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they just don't know how to do it or the same thing keeps repeating and they're, they're looking at it going, gosh, why does this keep showing up? And it will. And, and here's an interesting thing about why it keeps showing up. That was a very good point for you to bring up is that whatever, whatever sadly perhaps, whatever it is that we're dealing with, until we get the lesson, it will continue to repeat itself. In other words, if I'm supposed to learn patience, if I'm supposed to be a more patient person, then I will be inundated with things that try my patience. I'll go to the market. I'll be driving my car. There will be people that are driving fast or cutting me off or one thing or another, or there will be phone calls coming in that expect answers and deadlines that I can't meet. So if patience is one of those things that I should be learning in this life, it will continue to repeat until I learn it. Now, the good news to that, Marianne, is this. 
once I learn how to be more patient, and it doesn't mean that you'll never lose your patience because we will do that at times, but Mm -hmm. if you begin to learn how to be more patient and more tolerant, then guess what? Those things simply go away. Well, now, let's go back to what we started talking about in the beginning, how we change our reality by changing our words. So if patience is something that I know that I don't have a lot of, something that I need to be working on, I would change my words. I would create my little mantra or my little saying, or I might write it down on a sticky note, and I might put it on my bathroom mirror. Uh, I might do different things to remind me of it, but I would say things like, I am very patient today, or my patience is better than it's ever been, or Wow, I can't believe how patient I am. And it's like when you put those words, when you speak them, you speak with an authority and a reality, and you speak that into your own life, your own energy, and everything around you. But when you start speaking it, your mind, your body, your spirit has no choice except to hear it and to start conforming. Now, I'll give you another little funny example. You wake up. You know, a lot of us, we don't feel good. We, uh, something's hurting. You know, we've had a, a little trial. Something's happening in our life. Finances are not good. Love is not good, one thing or another. So we wake up and <clears throat> we uh, begin our day and, um, you know, I don't know, Marion. What what is what is some statements that people would be saying if their life is not going good? What do you, what do you think somebody might be saying? Well, Dina, you know, I've I've heard a lot of people say things like, you know, you know, I, I don't make enough money, or mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they wake up and they're worried all the time. They always have worry, mm-hmm. or maybe mm-hmm. they just can't find the person who they would consider to be like the their one true the love of their life or the love of their life. Um, maybe they're having well, let's, problems let's, at work, you know? Let's make this real personal. Let's okay. bring it right back to being real personal. I don't okay. feel good. I don't feel good, you know? I don't feel good. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty honest statement because a lot of us have those days where we just don't feel good. Well, here's what happens. You wake up with that attitude, I don't feel good, and it may be 200% true. Your mind knows what you're thinking. Your body knows how you're feeling. Your spirit knows what your attitude is about this. So, all right, let's take it to this level of understanding. Let's say your mind, your body, your spirit, you wake up, and it knows that you don't feel good, and you said, oh, boy, I don't, I just don't feel good. So the mind, body, spirit, it communicates with each other, and it says something as silly and as trivial as, Okay, guys, shut it down. She doesn't feel good today. We don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. So it just slides right into the rhythm of what you've created, where on the other hand, and because we have a choice, and we may be fudging a little bit or hedging just a little bit, but if we wake up and we'll say, wow, I feel good today. Oh, wow, I feel good today. Mind, body, spirit says, okay, boys, Crank it up. She feels good. We've got to earn our money today. And so it immediately, I know that's kind of silly, but yet it's a good way to explain that, is that the mind, body, and spirit has to conform. And we can say things about not having enough money. Then we can, instead of continuing to say, I'm not able to pay the bills, and that may be the biggest truth that they have, is that they just don't have enough money. Uh, I, I know people that are redoing their homes. They're having, maybe they've had floods or one thing or another, and they don't know where the money is going to come from. And that's never a really easy thing. But the more they say phrases like, there's never enough money, I'll never be able to do this, then that is what they're speaking into their reality, what they're speaking into authority. Instead, they can say, Things are going to be better today. The money is going to work itself out. In other words, find a way to rephrase that reality into a more positive statement. The funds are on their way. The money is going to be available. I will find a new way to handle this burden or whatever it is that's going on. So 
How, how do you think that works, Marianne? Have you, have you personally ever tried anything like that? <laughs> I try all the things you suggest, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, because I've attended many of your workshops and I, I do show up, you know, addressing my personal things that are going on. Everyone's got something. And so when I do show up, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm, I'm ready to work on these things no matter how small or how big it may be. And I find that when I've done these statements, it's really helped me to shift the energy and to shift myself into a better place. Mm -hmm. And so I really have appreciated that. And even sometimes, because we all kind of, you know, get stuck in the bushes and sometimes we're, you know, can't see the forest from the trees with different situations, and when I feel that either the anxiety or that, gosh, how am I going to do this or how am I going to work through this or whatever that case is, I stop myself and I make the conscious effort to look for wording that will shift all of that. And uh-huh. sometimes it takes me a little while to do it. I mean, I can, uh-huh. you know, it, 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 I'm not really... Um, Sometimes it doesn't really come easily to me, and I have to call and make an appointment with you so I can get the right wording that works for me. <laughs> well, it, you're, what you're describing is something that we all have learned behavior. In other words, mm-hmm. we've learned, we've done it for so many years or for so long, we've spoken or acted out the same way that uh, it's learned to behavior, and it becomes very easy, very automatic, but what we don't realize all the time is that that learned behavior is so ingrained that we are part of our issue. We are continuing to create. You know, there, there's something that I, I've been very aware of. You know, we've we've been looking at life from a lot of different perspectives as we're working, teaching, and growing. And we are learning that there are many differences in uh, our age groups, ourselves, our children, our younger people, and uh, there's been a lot of talk that goes uh, about the millennials and some of the uh, other generations. But in, in looking at this and considering this and what we're talking about today about how we change our reality, some of the things that have shifted for many of us, uh, I, I, I will say that for the most part, we're doing the best we can with what we have. In other words, we've learned behaviors or words. Uh, maybe a teacher told us we would never succeed, so that becomes learned behavior, and we will continue to say to ourselves, well, I'll never make it because other people could never believe in me. So there, there are many things that are surfacing as we are working with people today. But honestly, we're doing the best we can with what we have, meaning that uh, some of us, we have not had, uh, we did not receive the best parenting skills. Uh, our parents did not prepare us in many ways because the family um, connections started shifting and started changing, and perhaps both of our parents were working, which left us alone much of the time, so we did not learn a lot of the skills that are helpful today where we would perhaps be a little wiser about changing our words or maybe even understanding why some of the phrases we're saying today are not in our best interest. But we have not learned patience in many ways, and this is showing up. If you look at the daily news or read the headlines or listen to some of our news shows, you'll find out that in many ways we are not patient people, and uh, it's our lives seem to have sped up in many ways. We have uh, uh, less time to do things. We're very impatient. Uh, a lot of our generations today are so adept in technology, and, and because of my age, I have to admit that some of this, I might have missed out on it, but honestly, I love technology, as most of you that know me will know that about me. But it also can get in our way because what's happening with some of our younger generations is that they are not learning how to have relationships. Um, they're not learning how to, let's say, something as simple as go out to dinner and know how to sit and have a conversation because Today, if you go to a restaurant or a lot of the families that I work with, if you go into the home 
at the dinner table, when they do eat together, they're all sitting there with their phones and they're using their technology. So while technology is a good thing, it can get in our way. And we are having higher cases uh, of depression now than we've ever had. We are having higher suicide rates now uh, more than we've ever had uh, before. We have greater, um, well, in other words, there's so many people that don't understand that simply changing our words and changing our own reality that we can get away from this. In many cases, we're turning to taking a pill uh, or drugs or alcohol or um, sometimes it causes a lot of different barriers like gambling or drugs or uh, sexuality, a lot of different things. But there are a lot of lessons that we did not learn, that we have not learned, and perhaps we're not teaching to our own children. So Many of these things, when we can identify it, we can start to change our reality by saying, you know, that I am more relaxed. I am a good person. You know, if you grew up and someone told you that you were not going to be successful, um, then you can say, I am successful. And that will begin to change your reality like nothing else that you could ever say. I am worthy. And, you know, what if you had a parent that, um, just as an example, let's say, what if you had a parent that was uh, an alcoholic or an addict or perhaps someone that harmed you or put into your head that you were not worthy? Well, here's where your words will change your reality. You can say, I am worthy. I am capable. But if you believe, and, and sadly, I see this happening today, Marianne, where many of us will become the very person that harmed us or changed our focus in life. And it's like, you know, maybe my mom was not good to me, and uh, then we, we are becoming our mother. We're acting out all the things that she taught us. We are now doing that to ourselves. So sometimes we may say, I am not my mother or I am not my father or we might say I am not that person. So we need to sit down and we need to think about what's going on in our lives and we need to say, we need to own these things. Like I am worthy of having more than enough money and I am opening my life up. I'm going to do my part. I am an open, opening my life up to have all the money that is going to be necessary and some things that I can enjoy above and beyond what I need and require. But I am worthy of that, and I am capable. And, you know, just become that person. I am a successful person. So I think a lot of times, yeah, and those are, are fabulous words, and I've been writing a few down. I hope the rest of you have been as well, because they're very powerful statements, more so than I think people realize, because a lot of times we think, gosh, you know, it has to be really tough to make these changes, and it has to be this, you know, detailed outline thing instead of something being as simple as watching what we say. Well, and and these changes that we're looking for, they have to begin within us. No matter what form they take, whether you're taking, you're having counseling, whether you're getting out and doing things differently, it has to begin within you. And there's no better place because that's like the, the massive computer of your body, your mind, body, and spirit. You're the one that's in charge of that, and you can say, well, I'm not that person. I am not. And the minute you say that, you are rewriting the script of your life. I knew a person, and I I know this is a silly little story, but it's a true story. I'll tell it to you. There was a person who grew up with a mother that unfortunately had migraine headaches all the time. And she didn't mean to have them. I mean, it was very painful, and the older she got, the worse the headaches got to the point that she would actually go to the hospital, get a shot, and have to deal with the pain. And she had children, and she would say to the children, I'm so sorry, but you're going to be just like me. You're going to have these migraine headaches. Well, you know, words become reality. And when our parents are telling us things, many times, if we're young, we just take it in. 
-hmm. and it becomes learned behavior. And as life would have it, both of those children started having migraine headaches, just like their mother did, Mm -hmm. until one day they got older, came across somebody who said, you know what, if you'll change your words and get back in charge of your life, you can make this go away. And they said, yeah, I don't believe that. And the other person that was teaching them said, well, try me, you know, just just do what I'm saying and work with it a little bit. But it came down to as simple as one of them finally saying, I am not my mother. I will not have these migraine headaches. And do you know, Marianne, that person has never had another migraine headache. Once they spoke the words of authority into their own life and disavowed having to be that, they had become, they had become that very situation. But once they spoke it, and in fact, I think they got angry. And they said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, it's not me. I'm not going to do this." And they said, "I will not." So that's how it worked. Well, you know, and it's it's amazing how something so simple can make such drastic changes. Yeah. There's a young man who's in med school today, and has has had a very challenging life in many many ways. But he's a brilliant young man. And his words are hurting him in many ways because he will say, look, guys, I'm just not smart enough. All of you want me to do this. I'm doing what everybody else wants me to do. And he's so confused in his thoughts. He he believes that everybody needs and requires him to become a doctor, to uh, fulfill his life in some way. And Part of the instructions to work with this young man are they go something like this. Okay, first of all, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? And then he's quiet for a moment. He says, well, okay, I I really do want to be a doctor, but I don't want to feel the pressure. Well, then just change your words and don't keep telling the universe that everyone else is making you become a doctor. Say what you want. I am worthy of being a doctor. I am capable of being a doctor. In other words, take the authority and do it your way and do not keep saying other people are forcing you to become this or forcing you to take on that role. If you want out of it, then simply get out of it. But if what's in your heart and in your spirit is that you want to be a doctor, then you need to change the words the way you speak about it and simply say, I am the doctor. I am worthy and I am capable of being the doctor. Now, Judy, there's um, some thought in regards to when you write it down, it has more power just because you're, you're kind of getting that intention out there. Is it the same with actually verbalizing it or is thinking it enough? Do you have to actually write it down and verbalize it? <clears throat> Good questions, Marianne. Very good. Um, There are several schools of thought here that we can follow. Uh, If I think it, is that enough? Well, what's your what's your track record? Mm -hmm. How how good are you at thinking things and following through with it and and really following it out? Uh, A lot of us we don't have the best track record. I'll think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be a doctor, and that's about as far as it goes. Well, that's part of the process, but for that particular person, maybe they need to go through what we call an act of transference, which means we will take that energy and we will either pull it into our heart and it becomes our passion and we feel it. We're not just thinking it, but we're feeling it now. When it's in the heart that's a passion, then it begins to become effective. Another thing that will enhance and reinforce that is that when I write it down on a piece of paper and a sticky note, it's like I am creating the script of my life that says, I am the doctor. So we're all a little bit different. For some of us, we have really incredible minds, and just to think it is the beginning of the process, and that's usually the better part of what it is we have to go through. But again, what we want to do is to move it from the head, which is where we think about it, and move it into the heart, which is where we feel the difference, 
and that's when it becomes effective. But, see, you raised a good point, which is to say, I've had people say to me, okay, I hear what you're saying. How many times do I have to say it before it starts working? Oh, yeah. Well, how many times do you have to think about it as long as it's just a thought? It does not have the same energy and the same uh, kicking ability of kicking this into your reality, it doesn't have the same ability or the same strength as it does when it finally becomes your passion. And when you become passionate about a thing, when you move it from your head to your heart, boom, that's immediately when it starts becoming effective. Uh, some person might say, well, if I say it six times today, does that make it become real? If I say the, my money, my financial situation is getting better, if I say it six times today, will that make it better? As long as you're just thinking it, slow process, may happen, may not happen, but when you feel it, when you drop it down into your heart area, into that heart chakra area, when you say, you know what, I may not know all the answers and I may not know how this is going to be, but I do believe that. I really feel that when you move that energy from the head where it's just a thought and you drop it into the heart area and you say it with conviction and knowing, that's when it works. And you may have to say it one time. So how many times does it take you saying a thing before you feel it instead of just saying it? I, You know what? And I can understand that because when I think things with my head, it's just a thought. There's no mm-hmm. emotion behind it. There's mm-hmm. nothing. No passion. No passion whatsoever. But if I can really get to the place where, like, you know, um, you know, whatever the the thing I'm I'm wishing to say, maybe somebody along the lines of, um, you know, I'm I'm a a great communicator. And if you just say it with just your head, then nothing happens. But if you, I could feel it with my heart. Then you, it's that's like you when everything the starts happen. happening. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> when the shifts start happening, I mean, I mean, I know there isn't like a cookie cutter thing with this. Is it, can it be just, um, a slow progression or is it just like miracles start to unfold daily for you? It could really be either. It could be both. Um, the main thing is to get out of our way. You know, we, when we, we pray or we meditate or we talk or we're reprogramming the script of our life, um, somehow if we have a faith or a belief or a passion about a thing, then we put it into that script of our life and we just, we forget about it and we go on with our daily life and quit worrying about it and we get out of the way. That's when it happens. And for some people, it will be gradual. Uh, for some people, it will be almost instantaneous. It might be uh, someone who has not had the money that they've needed to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it is a thought because when you're worrying about paying the bills, it's a thought. But then when they drop it down into that heart chakra area and say, you know what, I don't know the answer, but I really believe, I really do believe this is going to get resolved. Then the energy is different, and then when they turn it loose and let it go, they may the very next day get a call that says, hey, uh, you know that little job that we were working on? We really need your help here. So sometimes it will be as quick as something coming in the mail today, a phone call coming in, or you being uh, given another opportunity for an interview where you've been. So... Okay, let let me skip around with this a little bit because I don't know how much time we have today, but there's so many things I want to talk about. I, you always get me wound up and excited about so many different things here. So a lot of times... We can definitely have you on another time, Judy, too. So. <laughs> okay. Twist my arm on that one, right? <laughs> okay, okay, that sounds good to me. But here's one thing that's very popular, very universal, is the love of my life. You know, I, oh, yeah. how, how do I... How do I get the the perfect partner or whatever? Well, now, I do want to remind you of this. Now, as you're changing your, your, your words, as you're beginning to rewrite the script and your words are going to become your reality, there's a two-sided sword, shall I say, to this, meaning uh, you can say, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to attract the perfect partner. And try not to 
uh, go into little minute details because uh, the God of your understanding and the universe may know that uh, the person with the brown hair is better than the person with the blonde hair and the blue eyes. So try not to get so uh, limited in your thinking here. But if you want the right person to be in your life, just say, I want to attract the perfect partner in my life. Well, now, here's the other side of that. Write this little phrase down because this is a good one to remember. Like, Mm -hmm. L-I-K-E, like attracts like. In other words, Mm -hmm. wherever your life is, is what the vibrational shift that you're emanating, that you're sending out into the universe, that is what you're going to pull in. So if you are your best person right now, then you have a very good chance of pulling in the best person like you. Or, on the other hand, maybe there's a couple of little habits that you have that you haven't cleaned up. Maybe you haven't stopped smoking yet. No judgment here, just using that as an example. Or, you know, maybe you're spending a little bit too much money or you haven't been saving or you're not, you don't handle your bills responsibly or whatever. Wherever you are, like attracts like. So if you want to attract the perfect partner into your life, then perhaps one of the statements that would be appropriate to say is, I am becoming the best person that I can be, which means there may be some things that shift. You may have to go say I'm sorry to someone or you may handle things a little differently, or you might lose a little bit of weight, or you might get out and start walking. So rewrite your script. Remember your words become your reality. And just say, I am becoming the best person that I can be. And if you are your very best person, then that is the energy that you are putting out into the universe. And the universe says, okay, this person is doing the best they can. They are excelling. They are achieving. They are making all kinds of accomplishments and everything. And guess what? We're going to bring somebody into their life that is going to be just that kind of person, someone who's excelling, someone who's achieving. So like attracts like be the best person that you can be if you whine and complain all the time then there's good possibility that the person that comes into your life will be very needy Mm. very unhappy (laughs) so (laughs) two sides two sides of that sword ask you know speak it into authority but remember like attracts like the person that you are today is the kind of vibration that you create, and that's the kind of vibration of uh, partners. Or it, even even in our work experience, you know, if you're wanting to start a new company or a new business or something, then if you are honest and <clears throat> straightforward and you're successful, that creates a certain level level of energy, and the people that you hire or the people that you want to partner with, uh, more than likely is exactly what you're going to bring in. I was working with um, a man recently who, a uh, very brilliant man, very accomplished, and could not understand why he could not get past an interview. And, and it is hard to understand sometimes why we can't. But the, the man in question had come from another generation, uh, like we spoke earlier about millennials and how things have changed in many ways. And this man is of a little bit older generation, not too old to be working by any stretch of the imagination, but he was from a different time, and his approach to uh, being in interviews was very different. And as I worked with him, I said, well, I see that you're capable of the job, and they would be very lucky to have you, but the people that are interviewing you are a little younger than you, and they come from another generation, and unless you understand where they're coming from, you will not be able to interview successfully. And instead of being strong and taking charge, go in with humility 
and say, I like the sounds of what I'm hearing. I have a lot of respect for your company, and it would be such an honor for me to be able to work with you. In other words, come in with a little bit of humility, throttle back just a little bit in order to get that next interview because we have to understand people. We're all different, and each new generation brings changes that uh, some of us will not understand. So we do have to take the time to understand each other. There's so many things that we need to know about each other in today's world, so many things that are happening that if I could just sit and listen to you talk a little bit, if I could just hear you and learn why you hurt or why you want this change, who knows, I may be in agreement with you. But that takes us back to the very beginning of being teachers and healers and arbitrators and all of those things. So even as you are changing your life by changing the words that you speak, remember, you also have an obligation. Your life is a gift. It's an opportunity. It's not something that's just there for you to Do it any way you want to. Of course, you do have free will, but there are some responsibilities that go along with this. And as we become present and accountable and responsible, the better our lives are, the better they unfold, the easier it is to change our lives. If someone comes up and they're, you know, struggling, just really kind of having a tough time getting from, and they're using the words and it's, they feel like it's just not working, what would be some advice you would give them? Well, I, I believe, Marianne, what I would do is I'd say, let's, let's start here. First of all, tell me what's wrong. Tell me what you're struggling with. Let's write it down. Let's, let's write down all the things that you feel are wrong and the things that are challenging you. And what they may not understand is if I get them to write it down, there's that act of transference, meaning that they're placing a little bit of that burden outside of themselves for that amount of time. But if I can get you first to identify the things that are wrong, that you know, these are your words, what's wrong, Uh, then I can teach you how to put new words into place to change almost anything. So I would would say let's begin at the beginning. Let's take a piece of paper and let's write down the things that we want to change. What do we want to be healthier? Uh, We want to lose some weight in a healthy way. We want to have better finances. Make a list and then take each one of these things. Now, what I find, Marianne, is that many times when people write a long list like that, three or four of them come from the same scenario. Maybe they're handling their life in a way that they shouldn't. So by writing it out, we can narrow it down usually to six or seven things that need some adjustment or a little tweaking or a little bit different way to talk about it. And once we narrow it down to those four, five, six, seven things, then it's as easy as finding the words that will rephrase it and help to rebuild it into something positive. But first, identify what's going on. What what are your needs? What are your requirements? What are your wishes? What do you want to be different? Write it out and then look at it and then develop the words to say things that are in a very positive way that will allow the God of your understanding and the universe to bring about the changes. See, there, I, I see the, the universe, shall we say. I see it as limitless. I, I don't see uh, limits on the things that can happen. What I do know is that sometimes it doesn't happen in the way that we believe it's going to. In other words, if I start asking for a new car, maybe in my mind, excuse me, I'm thinking Lexus, Mercedes, Cadillac, whatever, and then one day I bought a ticket for $20 and I got a brand new Pontiac. Well, Mm. new car is new car, right? Mm. So I see the universe as being limitless, having no limits, 
but I also have lived life long enough to know that I'm not smart enough to always know the right way for these things to come to me. And that's why I get out of the way once I take it from the thought into the feeling and the emotion then I release it and I let it go, and I just wait to see what are the miracles. It kind of, in a way, Marianne, goes back to, remember there was a time when a lot of us did vision boards. You remember those days when we would put pictures out of all the things that we wanted. We wanted a new house. We wanted a new car. We had a great love in our life or a better job, and we would cut pictures out that represented that, and we would put it on our vision boards. And I heard an interesting story just a few days ago where someone had found they were cleaning up and they went and came across their vision board that they had created 10 years ago, and they checked off all the things that had happened. In other words, most of those visions had been fulfilled, but interestingly enough, not in the way that they thought. And you know, There's an old country song, country and western song, that goes, Mm -hmm. thank you for not answering that particular prayer or that request. So (laughs) many times these things come not in the way we expect it, but most of the time has been my experience. Most of the time it comes in the way that is truly better for us. I like how you said you know um, that we you kind of like we you don't have all the answers you don't know every no. way that it's going to happen, and I think that it gives people a good sense of kind of um, relief to know like they don't have to have all the answers. It's really no. m- more about having some you know some trust and some faith that it's going to mm-hmm. all work out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, okay, here, there's somebody listening that's going to say, well, what if you don't have faith and what if you don't have trust? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there are people that are that way. They've been hurt or they've been raised or by choice. They, they just choose to feel that way one thing or another. Then just write it down. Just keep writing the words, you know. Uh, gosh, back in the good old days, if you made a mistake, a teacher might say, go to the blackboard and write down, I will not talk out loud. Uh, a hundred times or whatever. So, Mm -hmm. again, teaching us how to be quiet and (laughs) behave in school. But just if you don't feel like you've got the the ability to take it from a thought to moving it into your heart to be a feeling or an emotion, if all that you're able to do is just to write it, then just write it. Write it out on a sticky note or a piece of paper and tape it up to the wall. Do a sticky note where you write it down and you just put it on your bathroom mirror or wherever it is you go to wash your face in the morning or shave or brush your teeth so that you've got to read it every time you go. And, you know, don't forget, a lot of us, we we take buses or we take trains, uh, we drive to work or we go visit or whatever. We have a long time where we are along with our thoughts and everything, just keep repeating those thoughts. If you don't know how to do it any other way, just keep repeating it. And if you don't quite understand what it means to move the thought into your heart where it becomes a feeling, then just keep thinking it. Just keep on thinking, keep on thinking, keep on thinking. Do whatever it is that you're able to do. But our words create our daily reality. Um, You know, some of us are blessed with good health. And there are some of us that will have health issues and health challenges. And sometimes our words will not overcome an illness uh, or a health issue that we have. But yet our attitude about whatever it is we are dealing with will allow us to heal better, to rise up in spite of it, and to continue walking in our life. And because we have a... Uh, maybe we've lost a limb or we've got an illness or we've got cancer, it doesn't mean that we are incapable of all of those things that we talked about in the very beginning being a light bearer. You know, some of the people that carry that light of hope and belief are very sick and very ill people, and they carry that light because they believe. They believe in things that sometimes they can't even talk about, but All of those things, all of those things we mentioned in the very beginning, the things that I did ask you to write down, we are going to achieve those in one way or another in our lifetime. And it's not a curse. 
it, it, it's not a burden or anything. It's just an opportunity for you to know another part of this incredible soul, this incredible spirit, this incredible person that you are. But remember, every day you have a choice of the words that you speak, the thoughts that you allow to occupy your mind, and every day you can rewrite the script of your life. Every day you have that opportunity. That's such an encouraging thought because a lot of times I think people feel like they're stuck by their their circumstances, like I'll never be rich enough or smart enough or, you know, or cute enough or, you know, or have the right education or it could be it's a list that never ends of things that they just feel that um, for one reason or another that they're not good enough. And mm-hmm. it's encouraging that they can start with simple statements, and um, and I'm and Mary and that goes no matter what age they are. Mm-hmm. Our generations have changed so much. We are all so different in so many different ways. This is not restricted to race, color, creed, age, wealth, anything. We all have this gift. We all have this ability to change our lives every day just by changing the words that we speak. And you know what? If, if, if this makes an impact with your audience, and as I understand the way your work is going today, uh, you are wrapping around the world, and congratulations on being this incredible person that you are and making these things available for people. But if someone has a story or they want to share, you know, how this maybe has impacted them or how they took something as simple as changing their words and it changed their life, I hope that they'll write you or write me, uh, get in touch with us and let us share in the excitement of your achievement. You don't have to do this alone. We would love to share the knowledge of your successes with you. I I just I love how you bring so much light to the world, Judy, and you've been such an inspiration to me for such a long time. I'm so grateful to have you in my life and to call you friend. And also I've learned so much from you. I've taken just about every workshop that you offer, regardless where it's at. And from each one, I have learned such a tremendous amount. So, you know, thank you for just being here and then sharing your wisdom with us today. I I so greatly appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure to be with someone as, as sweet and as profoundly gifted as you are. And, you know, you have such a, a broad range of people that are listening to you. If they have a topic that they would like to have a, a, a class or a discussion or some show for you to do, if they have some things that they want uh, us to talk about, one of the interesting things about me is that there's very few things that I cannot talk about or very few places uh, when it comes to spiritual teaching and enlightenment, very few places that I cannot go. Um, I have been blessed in that way. So let us know if there's something that you want to learn about or grow about, let us know. Let Marianne know. And we'll see if we can't put something together that will uh, reach right into that area that you've got. But our, our thoughts and prayers will continue to be with each and every person that hears your show. And uh, tune in. You know, tune in often. Marianne has got such a diversity of uh, people that are authors, that are teachers, that are light bearers, that are arbitrators, almost all of these things are represented with the people that are doing shows with her. So stay tuned. I'm sure it's only going to be more interesting as each day comes and goes. Thank you for allowing me to be part of that, Mary Ann. Thank you, Judy. And our listeners, I know they could connect with you directly on your website, judygoodman.com, and that you are also on all sorts of social media. And I know you're quite busy. Are you accepting any new appointments? (laughs) <laughs> well, we always will look at the appointments. Sometimes you have to wait for a little while, but yes, we we are continuing because we just uh, 
the work is so wonderful today. People are making such changes. We've seen people change their entire life in just a weekend or a day or two or whatever. So uh, people are eager to make changes in their life. And, yes, we're accepting appointments. May have to wait just a little bit. But uh, go to the website, as Marianne said. It's judygoodman.com. Real easy to find. We've had way over a million people that are listening and there is an audio book that's available that's been downloaded in over 22 countries now. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're very blessed and very grateful for that. So check in with us. And if there's some way that we can help or bring another class to you or another conversation, we'd be happy to do it. Aww. Well, thank you, Judy, for taking the time to be on the show with us today. We just so greatly appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in today. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne with Judy Goodman. You can, again, visit her website at judygoodman.com. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guests and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.